Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and clap your hands in God's house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. And as you stand to your feet, give God your best praise. Hallelujah, God. Amen. That you're able to do that on your own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, stand up all around the room. Stand up all around the room. And let's wave across the room to somebody. Amen. Let them know that God is the best thing that ever happened to you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, I don't know what you come to do. Amen. But I come to give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on and shout in this place. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, the song said I searched all over. I couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Come on, nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Amen. Amen. Again, put those hands together. Let God know you love him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. It says, I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I searched high and still couldn't find nobody. Nobody. I hear y'all. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. We're going to say it again, church. Say it with me. I searched all. Yeah. Couldn't find no. Yes. I searched. Still, yes, say it with me, say, nobody, yes, nobody, nobody greater than you. We're going to say it again, everybody around the room, say it with me, say, I searched all along, yeah, couldn't find nobody, Ooh. I searched Nobody great. Nobody. Come on, say it. Nobody great. Yeah. Nobody greater than you. Oh, y'all sound so good. We're going to say it again. I searched all over. Say it. I searched all over. Come on. Couldn't find nobody. Yeah. I searched high and low. Still. Still couldn't find nobody. Come on and say it with me. Say it. Nobody great. Not like my. Oh, 
concert. Yes. Come on, say it, y'all. No. Come on and say it. Say it. Say it one more time and say it. Come on, say it. Sir, I searched. Yes, I did. I searched everywhere, y'all. I searched. I'm still. Come on and say it. Say it. Nobody, 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 nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Bring it all the way down. I want to hear them say it again. Say it. I searched. Say it, y'all. I search. Come on, say it. No, not like mine. Ooh. When you ride in your car, I want you to say your name. your children your marriage say mighty are the works of your hands to the young people you go to school name is above a name good when you take that test and you're worthy of all praise and you get that passing score mighty are the works of your Search, I search. Yeah, good. I search. Still, I'm gonna say nobody. something comes over you when you finally find the Savior for yourself something comes over you when you finally find the Savior for yourself I noticed this morning I told sister Shanita the young people got their own they got their own section now y'all see that it this is the VIP section I just They're coming together. I, I know our seasoned saints like, oh, all the young people are back here. They over here, they over here. It's good to see that, right? They're not all the way in the back. Amen. They're dead set in the middle. Amen. Close to the pastor's way. Amen. They're close to the pastor. So they can hear a word, amen? Amen. amen? amen. We are here for the broken and the brokenhearted, right? We say, come as you are. Not when they get here, we start judging, right? Amen. But we want them to come just as they are so we can love on them. Amen. 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 And God can speak to them. Amen. 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 It's not the church building we want them just to be in. We want them to have a relationship Amen. with the Father Amen. just like we have a relationship. The song says, you are my strength and strength like no other. And in this day and time, what our young people go through and what they're coming out of, they need God's strength. Amen? Amen. And yes, as, a, as adults, amen, we need it as well. So if you don't mind lifting your hands in the air, setting the atmosphere in your row, you, 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 you've already found the ground, of, you've already tilling the ground, you're already tilling the ground, that's the word I'm looking for, you're already tilling the ground for worship. Now you want to send out your praise and worship in a heart posture for him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We can come all done up, all made up, but we still need him every day. Amen. Our vulnerability needs to be before his feet. Hallelujah. And I want you to tell God your own love story. You are my that's your love story. Strength. Woo! Strength like no You can't believe what you went through this year, but you're here. 
If God has you still here, say, you are my strength. You are my strength. Yes, he is. Strength like no. And when you wanted to give up, some of us even thought about suicide. No. And God is still right there saying, it reaches to me. All over the room, let's say it together. Say, you are my strength. Say, you are my strength. Yes, you are, Lord. Strength like no other. Come on, church, lift your hands and say, strength like no other. Somebody say, it reaches. reaches there are things you don't even tell no one but you told God and he's your strength say you are my strength and God is a keeper he's a keeper he's a keeper like no he's a battle axe in time of a battle like no I don't know about you but he's my lily in my own valley come on lift those hearts and those mouths and those hands and say you are my strength you are my Worship collectively. Somebody say it and reach us to me. Yeah, all over the room, we're gonna say it one more time. Say, You are, you are my strength. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. Say, Strength like no other. Jesus, come on, going through it. I'm strength like.
strength like no other. Strength like no other. He said you will mount up on wings as eagles. Come on, and reach us. Come on, say it again. Say you are my strength. Say you. He was wounded for my transgression. Come on. The chastising of his peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed. It reaches, it reaches to me. His healing power, come on, it reaches. The blood would never lose its power. The blood would never lose its power. Because it reaches to the mountains. Hallelujah. It reaches. And the blood flows to the lowest valley. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And it would never, ever, ever lose its power. It reaches to me. It reaches. I dare you to pull on Jesus wherever you are. It reaches to me. You have done that God can't save. There's nothing that you have done that God can't save. All over the world, reach His sake. Let Him reach you. Let God's Holy Ghost take over. Let God's Holy Ghost power take over in this room. Let him reach you. Break down every wall. Break down every wall and let's worship for a few more minutes. Come on, break down every wall. Break down every wall right now. Break it down, break it down, God. We break it down. Every wall, every vulnerability, let it out right now in front of God. God wants it. In the fullness of your grace. The fullness in the power of your name. We live. Thank you, Lord. We live you up. So in the fullness of your grace. And in Tell the enemy, strength like 
No. You tell the enemy he's a strength like no. And it reach. No matter where I am, no matter where you are, and the enemy trying to come right here. You tell the enemy every time, God is my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. I don't care where you are. It reach. My God, in the fullness of your grace, and in the power, there's so, let me tell you, there's so much power. Because the enemy wants you down. The enemy wants you to give up. The enemy wants you to commit suicide. But we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Right now, God lifts me up. In the fullness of your grace. You, you, got, you understand it now. You understand it. We shouldn't be here. Oh, your name. God, I want to lift you up. My mind. I lift you up. Whatever it is, give it to him, whatever it is. Because we realize the power. We, we know the power. We live. We live. While our body is aching. Come on, somebody. While the storm is already going on, I'm still. We live you up. Going into the doctor's office hurting, but in the power of your grace, I see the report. In the power of your name, this is the last time we let you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, 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 we lift you up. 
almighty power, Holy Ghost power, Lord, supernatural power, Lord. We lift you up and we give you praises, Lord. There is no God but you, Lord. Searched all over, couldn't find no one. This is Jesus, Jesus, we give you praises, Lord. You are our Lord and our Savior, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, Lord. And we give you praises, Lord. And we thank you for all that you do, Lord. You, Lord, you, Lord, is our Savior, Lord, and we praise you. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. And there is no one but you. You are Lord God Almighty, the way. There's no other way. The truth, there's only one truth. One truth, and you have the truth, Lord. You can look all over, but there's only one truth, and that's found in your word, Lord. And we praise your name, and we thank you for that truth, Lord. Thank you for that truth, Lord. We walk in that truth, Lord. And you are the life, Lord. There is only one life. You have given that to us once we accept your son as our Lord and Savior. We have life eternal, Lord. That's the only life eternal we have that. You have given us a choice, Lord, except death or life, Lord. We choose, we choose life, Lord. And that's in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord, and give you the praises, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. You so loved us, Lord. We are made in your image and in your likeness, Lord, and given dominion, Lord, over your creation, Lord. We give you praise. Such love, Lord, there is no other love like that. And when we messed up, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us with his blood, Lord. Now, Lord, we're back in relationship with you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. We give you praises, Lord. No other God but you, Lord. Lord, we pray for Parkview Christian Life Center, Lord, that we will walk in your word, Lord, and in your ways, Lord. We pray for the families here at Parkview, Lord. We ask that you bless them, Lord. We pray for the marriages here in Parkview, Lord. We ask that you intercede and build us up, Lord, and we will become that church that you would have us to become, Lord. We will give you praises for that, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for the mission that you have given Parkview here, to go out into the uttermost parts of the world, to preach your word, Lord, to let people know that Jesus, Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation, Lord. There is none other but Jesus, Lord, and we praise you and give you holy, Lord. Give us the opportunity, Lord, to, to tell people about you. That is our desire, Lord, to do the Great Commission, Lord, to go out and lead individuals to Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do, Lord. We want more of you, Lord, more of you, Lord, less of us, Lord. I pray, Lord, not our will, but your will be done in all things, Lord. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord, for all that you do. Lord, 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 just work in us, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit consume us, Lord. Your word says, when there's one or two gathered together, there you are also, Lord. We welcome you here, Lord. Take over this, take over this session, Lord. We ask that in Jesus Christ's name, Lord. Again, there's no other God but you. We walk in your word, Lord. Thank you, for Lord, for all that you do, all that you are doing, and all that you will do, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the honor, Lord. We just uplift you, Lord. There's no one like you. Alpha and Omega, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we give you the praise. Amen. It reaches from the highest mountain, it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength 
from day to day it will never lose its power oh it reaches from the John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Good morning, Parkview. I'm Sister Yvonne Hill, and these are your announcements for today. Attention military personnel, both past and present. In honor of Veterans Day on the second Sunday, November 12th, you will be recognized for your service to our country. If you have any clothing items or uniform that represents your service area, please consider dressing for this occasion. Thank you, Sister McGriff. Parkview, we are beginning to work on the church calendar for 2024. If you are a ministry leader and have an event you would like to have approved and added to the calendar for your ministry, please stop by the welcome desk to pick up an activity sheet. Also, if you are a member and have an event program or idea you would like the church to consider, please stop by the welcome desk and pick up an activity sheet. All activity sheets should be returned to the church by this Wednesday, November 8th, for consideration by the pastor. Thank you and God bless. The Solavita African Heritage Cultural Club Educational Fund Incorporated is pleased to announce the 2024 scholarship application process is now open. Graduating high school seniors attending college in 2024 
and who reside or attend school in the greater Haines City, Poinciana area should apply. Each scholarship recipient receives a total of $4,000, an assigned mentor, and are invited to participate in life skill development workshops. Students can apply at sahccef.com. Applications must be complete and submitted by February 1st, 2024. Act now, don't wait until the last minute. If you have any questions, contact Jerry Carter, Board Advisor at 863-438-2923. Donor generosity has allowed us to award 11 2023 student scholarships. Thank you. Dear Parkview family, the Word Ministry is again hosting our annual Each One Reach One Angel Tree Ministry for families needing assistance with Christmas gifts for their children. Applications are available today after service. Applications need to be submitted by November 12th please stop by the welcome kiosk to pick up an application or if further information is needed. Thank you and God bless. Parkview, please send all announcements Tuesday evening before that Sunday to announcements at pclctheview.org. Be sure to spread the word about our monthly food giveaway here at Parkview every first Friday of the month. Text PCLC to 833-600-9222 to sow a seed into the ministry. Also, you can view every service live from anywhere when you subscribe to Pastor Henry Babers on YouTube. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss the word. To our visitors, on behalf of the Parkview Christian Life Center family, we welcome you and thank you for joining us. God planned for you to be right here and we know he has a word for you that will change your life. As a reminder, all services are recorded, so we ask that you please limit your movement during the sermon. Please make sure all small children are accompanied to the restroom by an adult. Also, it is very important to turn off all cell phones. And please, no eating or drinking in the sanctuary. Let us respect God's house. Now, prepare yourself for the word of excellence and to receive the kingdom vision and provision God has for you. Again, I'm Sister Yvonne Hill, your announcer. Thank you. And remember, this is the year we choose life. God bless. Hard to give God a shout, praise the day. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. How many of you know he's worthy to be praised? Come on, let's praise him like he's worthy. The Lord is a good God all the time. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good. Even when we are confused about what he's doing, all things still work together for our good. The bad, the downs, the bitter, the disappointments. Somehow God put it all together. Amen. How many of y'all believe that and have seen God do it? Amen. So that's why we should always have, should always have praise on our tongue even when we're confused. Just praise him anyhow. Amen. Because he is a good God. Amen. We're going to get our hearts and our mind prepared for our giving this morning. This also is our day that you have set aside to bless your pastor in a special way. And when I say that, y'all set it aside. I didn't do that. Now, act like y'all did it. Amen, somebody. Uh, so if anyone desire 
pass a glass envelope, they certainly would bring it to you. Just lift your hand high and you'd know what the scripture says when you pour into uh, the prophet. He also, or that person that bringing that word, feeding you uh, over your under shepherd, covering you. Uh, when you pour into his life, her life, they certainly, God turns around and give you that reward of that same person. Amen. So trust God's word. Amen. Now, also, this is, we do it at the same time. We don't separate the pastor bless offering with the giving of our tithes and offering. We do all that at one time. So if you need a envelope, certainly lift your hands. And um, if you're going to give electronically, all that would be coming for the church, for the pastor, whatever way you want to be a blessing, uh, you can be. Amen. I don't know. Right now, I just feel like praising them again. Come on. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. My goodness. So, uh, if your hand lifted and you desire one day, we'll bring it to you. We're going to stand now together. I've already heard y'all praising the Lord out here. Amen. The atmosphere has been set. Amen. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of the saints. He brings our praise into his bosom. Amen. All right, let's do this before we get ready to give. We know our tithing pledge on screen. Listen, God is so awesome in everything he do. I want you to hear this again. He never make a day the same. You can use your camera. Take a picture every morning. As a sunrise, you'll never capture the same morning. You can take that same camera, and as a sunset, you'll never capture the same sunset. Everything God does, he make it distinct. About nine billion people is on earth, and none of us sound exactly the same. Some of us sound close, but not exactly. So everybody got an instinct voice. So if God didn't hear your voice, because it's distinct, he missed it. Amen. So just for a few seconds before we give our tithes and our offering and pass a blessed day, make sure God hear your distinct voice in praise right now. Come on. Give God your voice. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah, God. Nobody makes your sound. Nobody give God praise like you. Nobody can magnify him for you. Nobody can speak for you. Nobody can praise him for you. Can't nobody magnify him. You got to do it yourself. Hallelujah. Come on, give God your best praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Come on. I am a titan, and I support the kingdom of God on this earth. I believe that the Parkview Christian Life Center is doing kingdom business. Therefore, I plant my seed in great ground that it will bring forth prosperity in every area of my life. I have no time for doubt or doubters. I am taught to obey the word of God so that the blessing of Christ overtake me and the favor of God shall find me. My cup shall run over. It's seed time. Amen.
Feet. 
sir say amen? Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Give God all the praises. Can you feel the spirit in here? Yes. Can you feel the spirit in here? Yes. This morning. Let's give God all the praises this morning. Yes. Thank God for everything. Hallelujah. Thank God for everyone. Hallelujah. Thank God for another brand new day today. Yes. Order my steps in his word. Please, Jesus, order my steps in his word. Y'all don't mind having me. Who's going? Can I get a witness? Help me out, y'all. There you go. I need y'all to help me too now, okay? Each and every one of y'all. From the front row to the back row. Let's pray for this morning.
Hallelujah. Father God, in the awesome mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name which is far above every name. The name that heals, saves, and set the captives free. The name that laid her down last night. The name that woke us up early this morning. The name that have the blood running warm in our vein right now. And our hearts and our hearts be known time. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you right now. No principality, no power, no wickedness in high places can stand against the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not ashamed of your name. We know there's power in your name. Hallelujah. And we boldly call your name. Even in a dying and sin-sick world, we still call on your name. Hallelujah. A world that don't want to call you, don't want to acknowledge you, we still take time out, God, to say that you're King of kings, you're Lord of lords, you rule and you still super rule. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding today. Let the Holy Spirit have a free course and let every heart say amen. Well, give God a radical praise in this place today. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Let's go to the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, the first seven verses this morning out of the Gospel of St. Luke. Amen. Chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. It's on the screen if you don't have it. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribe murmured, saying, This man received sinners and eateth with them. And he spoke this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, do not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he lay it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he cometh home and called together his friend and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over the 99 just person which need no repentance. Amen, somebody. You may seat, be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. You know, when we listen to Jesus with this parable, he really explains to us the priority that he has toward us. Jesus sees us as sheep. And he categorizes all of us as sheep. Sheep is one of, is probably the only animal that really need a shepherd. Amen. Uh, God made a sheep like no other animal or bird. A sheep is defenseless. They don't have horns, sharp teeth, short legs. <laughs> they have. 
and they are just round. They can't fly away from the enemy. They can't go in a hole. Amen. And so it's so important, and they don't have no defense mechanism. They can't even fight. So when Jesus looked at us, he says, I see sheep in need of a shepherd. That's why the Bible says he fights our battles. Amen. Amen. He makes our enemy our footstool. Every human being ought to make God their shepherd. Amen. Personally, he have, you ought to say, you know what? <laughs> I can't make it without God. We can't. A sheep also has a poor sense of direction. When he get lost, he can't find his way back. So the shepherd has to go out and find the sheep. Most animals, they can find their way home. When the sheep get lost, they got such poor sense of direction that the shepherd has to go and get the sheep. And God says, that's what we are. We are lost without the shepherd. We can't find our way home without the shepherd. Amen. I want, I want you to uh, put up that 23rd song, and I want you to see something as David speaks about the Lord is my shepherd. The 23rd song is only six verses long. And I think I counted in there 17 times in those six verses that David talks about the shepherd is personal to him. You know, most people think the 23rd Psalm is for us. But the 23rd Psalm is a personal song that David was singing to the Lord about himself. Yeah, look what he says in the 23rd song. And I want us to see how many times David makes this shepherd personally his. Now, everybody claims the 23rd song, but the Lord is not everybody's shepherd. Amen. The 23rd song don't belong to you unless the Lord is your shepherd. You just read it. And it don't apply to you if you have not made the Lord your Savior and your shepherd. And I know a lot of folk quote it, the Lord is my shepherd. I hope he is. Because the rest doesn't matter if he's not. So David didn't write this song just for us to grab hold to it and make it ours without God becoming our Savior. So if you watch as he's talk about this song, he, everything in there is about him and the Lord. Look at what he says. Verse 1, the Lord is mine. He didn't say us. My shepherd. I shall not want. He's still, in, he's not talking about nobody now but himself. My shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow 
all the days of and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is saying, David is saying, if he's not your shepherd, amen, somebody, then these other verses don't apply to you. How many of you have made him your shepherd? Come on, if the Lord is your shepherd, come on, let's give God a praise for being our shepherd. Now, the most important thing a sheep can do is stay close to the shepherd. All the protection, all the provision to make us become the best we can be, to stop us from being, being devoured by the world. Listen, church, we must stay close to the shepherd. We got, in order to have a successful life, we must stay close to Jesus. Here's the problem. Everyone looking this way? Here's the problem we have. Sheep wanders off. A sheep is a strange animal. It, it knows it can't fight. It knows it can't run or has no defense mechanism and a, have a terrible, terrible sense of direction. And yet that sheep will wander off. You know one of the reasons sheep run, wander off? They don't ever look where they're going. They don't even know where they, where they, where they was. You know what a sheep do? Watch, if you ever watch a sheep, it eats and move. Eat and move. It keep eating and walking. It may, and then when it finally looks up, it don't wander off. It's so busy satisfying its appetite. Oh, y'all wouldn't. <laughs> Hallelujah. A sheep is so busy satisfying its natural desire that it eats and keep on moving from God. Because as long as it's satisfying itself, it don't really care where it goes. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are spiritual with me now? It, it, it's so busy getting what it needs in the natural that when it finally looks up, it's far away from the shepherd. That's why sheep wanders off. They're fulfilling their appetites. This what I want, this what I like, and they, they don't take time to look up. The Bible, Isaiah say, we are like sheep if we're just going astray. Each of us in our what? Own way. And so when the see, here's the thing about a, a sheep. When it finally looks up, it's in danger. Because it's left the protection of the shepherd. So Jesus says he was, he was preaching and teaching and the publicans which they call sinners. And the sinners came to Jesus to hear him teach. Not only did Jesus teach them, I want y'all to hear this, Jesus loved us so much that he will come personally and start talking to you. There's not a sinner in here or a saint in here today that Jesus don't try to personally talk to you every day. If you were to just stop and be still, you'll hear God trying to draw you back to protection. 
prosperity, provision, and purpose. He's talking to you every day. And that's how much he loves us. So he was talking to the publicans and sinners, the Pharisees, these religious people, and the Sadducees and the high priests, all the church folks. They was in the church, but they were lost. They, they didn't know Jesus, but they were very religious. So Jesus had drawn a multitude of people. You know, one thing that religious people don't like is when the multitude of people start hearing the truth. It bothered them. But Jesus had these sinners before him, and he began to talk to them, and the religious people judged Jesus. They said, well, if he was really God, he wouldn't be hanging with them public and center. And then they said, and he eat with them. He done got so personal, he dined with them. He fellowship with them. And they thought Jesus couldn't be righteous. He couldn't be holy. How are you going to hang out with them type of people? I'm just here to tell you, I'm glad he hangs out with sinners. Because if he never hung out with sinner, he would have never found me. Can somebody say the same thing? One, one day Jesus just said, well, you're a lost sinner. I don't have time to look for you. Now, he, he, finds us in some, he finds us in some strange places. The, 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 the place Jesus called me from was a Friday night in a nightclub. That was my last nightclub event. He had been calling me all along, but that Friday night, I had wandered too far. Yeah, now, that's a long time ago, y'all. Sometime when I preach this, I had to remind people that wasn't last week. I wasn't there last week. I was 40, 35, 40 years ago, well, whatever, long time. Listen. He had been calling me, searching for me. I just refused to answer. He will seek out the lost sheep. He don't care if you're on the street corner. Amen, somebody. He don't care if you're homeless on a bridge. He don't care if people don't like you. He'll still find you and bless you. Hallelujah. So he finds us in strange places, but he'll come into the enemy territory to do that. He loves us just that much. And so Jesus is preaching to the Pharisees, uh, these publicans and sinners, and he's been judged. That's when he goes into this statement. Go back to Luke chapter 15. This is the chapter where he talk about the lost sheep, the lost corn, and the lost son, the parable son, the uh, prodigal son. So Jesus said, when he heard them mumbling, in verse 3 it says, and he began to speak this parable. He looked at the Pharisees and scribes, and he says in verse 4, he says, okay, which one of you? He said, if you had a hundred sheep, because back then they knew sheep meant prosperity, money, wealth. He said, which one? He, he looked at them, he said, okay, let me make this about sheep since y'all don't understand humans. He said, let me tell you, if, if y'all had 99 sheep, a hundred sheep, and you got ready to call it a night, and you found that one out of a hundred had went wandering out in the wilderness. Jesus looked at them and said, tell me which one of y'all wouldn't leave the 99 and go find the one. They understood it. Let me make it personal so you'll get it. Let's say you have five children. And you get ready to go to bed that night. And you count four safe and sound in the house under the cover. 
but your little three-year-old daughter don't wander off from the house. Would you go to bed saying, well, I have four out of five? Come on now, would you just go to sleep and say, well, I have, I just say, I'm just missing one. Come on now, your little three-year-old daughter out in the woods, you go in the bed and say, well, I've got, I have four out of five, I'm good. No, no, you'll leave those that are safe. Come on, church. You'll leave those that are safe and sound. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You will leave those under the roof, under the protection. Those that are already saved, that's what Jesus said. If you're already saved, he said he'd leave those that are saved already. And he go find, he go hunting for those that are lost. He leave the 99 that are safe. She said, you're judging me because I'm seeking the lost. I'm seeking the hurting. I'm seeking that, those that don't know me. And you're judging me because I came to seek and to save that which were lost. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, he, he, he's looking for you. Because you're lost. You are trying to make it in this world and you don't wander too far away and you're in danger. If you die today, you are in danger. If you really need some counseling and some spiritual advice, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you are in danger because you're seeking it from worldly people. So Jesus is looking for you. Now sometimes, save sheep. Wander off. Not just the lost. Sometimes them sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, Five baptized, wrapped up, tied up, tongue talking, saints of the living God. Amen. They won off. You see church, you see, you see saints out there. They they begin to satisfy their appetite. Eating and walking. Eating and walking. And they think, you know, they look up. They far, far away from the shepherd. Now, what Jesus does for the saved saints, he starts chastising you. He go find those that are lost and he ministers to them. But the ones that are saved, when he finds you, he chastises you. He chastised those he loved. Now, he don't chastise you to beat you up. He teaches you how to stay close to the shepherd. The Bible says, Paul says this. He says, really, Jesus Christ is our foundation. Everyone say foundation. foundation. He said, Jesus Christ is our foundation. And he says, there's no other foundation can anybody lay. Now listen, not only is he a shepherd, he has said again, foundation. And there's no other foundation can a man lay than that which is already laid. A foundation is that we build upon. Our lives should be built upon Jesus, the shepherd, the foundation. You know, let me show you something here. Let me, let me show you something. See, Jesus is a shepherd that never moves. He never changed. He always remained, come on, say it, the same. If you find yourself far away from God, let me tell you something, Jesus didn't move. I need somebody way in the back. If you find yourself feeling void and empty, let me tell you who did not move. Jesus didn't move. Yeah, I'm glad some of y'all got it. He remained, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Sometimes we say, well, I feel so far away from Jesus. Yeah, but he, he didn't move. 
A foundation is that we build upon. Now see, let's say for instance, Jesus is the center. Y'all see this bottle up here? Jesus is the center. And we need to stay close to the center of everything we do. I'm just going to put this on the edge right there. That, that's how some people... That's how some people serve Jesus. They live on the edge. They don't want to go too far from the shepherd, but they don't want to get too close either. <laughs> Somebody say edgy, edgy. See, some people, some Christians act that way. They, 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 they don't understand the provision, the protection, uh, and everything that you have is built on Jesus Christ. How do you stay close to the shepherd? You pray. You study the word. Amen. You worship. You listen. You obey. And you stay close to God. Everybody start wandering off a little, but when you get on the edge, like this here, everybody see this bottle? When you get on the edge, you don't have nowhere to fall a minute. When you go on the edge, you don't have nowhere. See, this is this, a, this, 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 this a funny edge. <laughs> this, this is a strange edge here. It ain't flat like I want it. But when you get on the edge, you don't have but one place to fall. Now, when you stay close to God in the center, you got them falling room. You got somewhere to fall. But when you get on the edge, you have nowhere to fall. God called the man the husband now. I'm just talking about the husband. I'm not talking about just the man, the husband. He says, do you not know you are really the foundation, the priest, of your home, and if you're, brother, if you don't know how, if you don't have no falling room through prayer, study, the devil loves to keep men on the edge. Hello, brothers. The devil loves to keep a man on the edge. He loves to keep women too, but he loves to keep that man just ready to fall. If you are the, if you, you say, well, and I know how it is. I, every time I preach this, I just feel, I just feel spirits coming after me. You know, because in the 21st century, time and change where we know what the word says, but we don't move from, so far from it that we said, yeah, he may be the head, he's just not mine. You know, something. <laughs> And I understand, it would take me the off course. I'd be somewhere in Georgia if I stayed on this subject today because I won't have time to explain it all. But let me just say what the scripture says. The Bible make, says that the man is the head of the woman as Christ is the head of the church. Now that's scripture. Now you don't have to agree with it, but it's still true. Amen. Now, the devil would love for that man to be, and I, I can preach the same thing with the woman. I'm just standing with this right now. Is that all right? I don't know why I asked you, because I keep on doing it anyway. Uh, he loved for that man to lead from the center, because he know if I can move you from the family, if I can remove you from the responsibility, if I can remove you from being a covering, and if I can just get you over the edge. It, you know, you're going to fall. Now, what God says, God says when we're with him, when we fall, we may fall, but we're never totally cast down. Come on, how many of y'all know Scripture? God said when we fall with him, we fall, but we never cast down. Because God is the foundation. We fall on the foundation. 
Come on, somebody. We fall on the foundation, which is Christ. He said, we don't utterly fall, but he upholds us. Hallelujah. He keeps us. So the devil loved to pull the uh, man to wondering. Now, see, it's some, God knows it's some stubborn. Sheep sometimes are stubborn. They said that sometimes what the shepherd had to do, a sheep would run off and the shepherd would go get him. He turned, next week he run off again and the shepherd would go get him. Run off again and the shepherd would go get him. He said after a while, the shepherd get tired of going at the sheep, so he breaks the sheep's legs. <laughs> and the sheep have to hang around the shepherd because the leg broke. He didn't say he killed the shepherd or the sheep now. He said he break the leg. He caused something to happen so the, so the sheep would have to stay near the shepherd. He, he, he reminded the sheep how bad they need the shepherd. Every now and then, things happen in our life that makes us call on the name of Jesus. Oh, everybody hear me. So every now and then, something will happen in your life that God is trying to get your attention to bring you back to him, that you stay close to him. Don't think everything happened in your life is by chance or accident. Some of that stuff is designed by God to bring you back close to him so you can hang with him, know his voice, amen, know his plan for you. Everything is not a chance. God said, I love you so much, I cause you to call me. Come on, somebody. He said, I will cause you to call on me. I'll cause you to stick close to me. I'll cause you to worship me. Amen. God is his foundation. Not only do men wonder, women wonder. Married people, single people, we just wonder off. See, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. He don't push me. He don't drive me. He don't force me. He leads. A leader need a follower. Come on, church. God is not going to force us in anything, but he'll lead us beside still waters. Why did David use the word still water? Because still water, a sheep is so afraid that if the water moving, he won't drink. Not only does sheep have bad direction, it's easily intimidated, fearful. A sheep is a fearful animal because he knows he just lamb chop. <laughs> we, by ourselves, fighting against the devil, we have no chance. Amen, somebody. Now, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. But if you ever try to go to fight the devil without God, amen. When you go fight the devil, amen, you got to talk like, the, like David did. The law, David said, the battle not even mine. Come on now. When you fight the devil, you got to hide behind the shepherd. And you got to declare, this battle not mine. God got the battle. God gives me the victory. Amen. All the days of, see, I'm going to get like David. All the days of my life, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Somebody claim it for your life right now. All the, look, all the days, not some of the days, but all the days of my life, I expect goodness, I expect mercy to follow me. Hallelujah, somebody. Come on. If you're expecting God to fight your battle, every time the devil thinks he got a hand on you, God show up. Look, look, look what God's, look what, look, look. Here, here's what Jesus is saying. He go find the sheep and he become a good shepherd. See, when you are allowing God to be your shepherd, it doesn't mean that the wolves are not around. Come on now, listen. When a shepherd is present, the wolves are around. 
but they'll stay in that bay. As long as the wolves see the shepherd, they won't come out the hills. It's not that they're not around, but they, they, they see the shepherd and the wolves are just watching. And the wolves are saying, I need one or two things to happen. I need the shepherd to leave, or I need the sheep to one off. I can't do nothing unless the shepherd leave or the sheep one off. If either one of them happened, the devil said, I would devour you. If the shepherd leave or the sheep wonder. That's why the shepherd go find the sheep. He said, I'll devour you if either one happened. So watch this. David says that really the shepherd don't get rid of your enemy. He prepares a table. For you in the presence of your enemy. See, you want the devil, God, to get rid of your enemy. God said, I don't get rid of your enemy. I just bless you in their presence. Come on, somebody give God a praise. God said, I want to see them. I want them to see you blessed, and I want them to know they can't do nothing about you being blessed. So I prepare your table. I prepare your blessing. I open doors in the presence of your enemy, and your enemy can't touch you. Your enemy can't do you no harm. They don't like it, but they can't change the blessing that God has in your life. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Give God a praise. Let me tell you, you're not here today because you protected yourself. If God wasn't watching over us, I need a church with me today. If God wasn't watching over us, shielding us from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, we wouldn't be in the church today. God got all over a lot of stuff that we didn't know what was going on. The devil launched a warfare, but God sent his angel. You ought to give God praise. You're not here by accident. God been watching over us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God have kept me. God have kept you. Whether you know it or not, we wouldn't be here today when I got up this morning if God didn't touch our bodies. Even if you don't know it, you ought to have enough sense to give him praise. Come on, somebody. Anybody know that if it had not been for the Lord working it out for your good, Come on, I need some real praise of them part of you today. Not a shame, not a shame of the name of Jesus. God, David said, this shepherd, when he finds the sheep, he is a good shepherd. He's not a hireling. He don't run and leave us when we get in trouble. He said, he said a hireling, he said the sheep ain't his anyway. So when the wolf come, he run and leave the sheep. He said, but I'm a good shepherd. He said, when I see your enemy, I step in front. And I tell your enemy, if you want my sheep, you got to come through me. Anybody want to serve God? Anybody want to praise God? He said, if you want them, you got to come through me. That's why the songwriter say, he's my shield. He's my buckler. He's my strong tower. We put it this way, he's my bridge over troubled water. He's my shelter in time of the storm. We kept on talking, he's my food when I'm hungry, my water when I'm thirsty, a roof over my head, my mother when my mother gone, father when my father gone. And then we just said, he's just my all. And all, somebody. Many people walk around in this world without the protection of the shepherd. If you're not saved, you don't have the protection of the shepherd. If you are saved and you want a one-off, you want it off from your shield. Amen. 
And I went back to what done happened to our society. What done happened to our world? Look at our young people. You, you know, look at this world. You bring up Jesus now, they act like you don't curse. I like you talking sacrilegion. All sheep in the 21st century done made their mind up, I'm going to do my thing. I, this is a beautiful scene where we have here today as many people in the church. You know a lot of people don't quit going to church? You mention church, they throw up both hands. Church. As if you're telling them something that's not going to be a benefit. Well, it depends too. Now, it depends. Everybody preaching is not a shepherd. I mean, my God, the devil, the devil don't allow the church to wander off into self-promotion, self-fame. What can I get out of the church? Who can I be in the church? Who will recognize me? Give me some power. Give me some position. See, Jesus said, you don't even know what the church is about. The church is about finding lost sheep. Oh, I need somebody with me. The church is not trying to make a name for yourself. Church is not trying to become famous. The church is, are you looking for lost sheep? That's the mandate of the kingdom of God. Are you a sheep? Are you looking for sheep? Some folk were not looking for sheep, but they're looking for self promotion. And Jesus gave them this beautiful illustration. He says, He left to find one. Let me tell you something. Jesus would have died just for you. He would have died just for one person. And then, as I close, the Bible says, the, what makes the angel in heaven shout? He just, just said, he said, he said, watch it. He said, he go find, he said, the shepherd go find his sheep. He put it on his shoulder. He come back home and he called his friends. And he tell his friends, he said, friends, I found my lost sheep. And he said, the friends rejoice. He said, everybody didn't rejoice, only the people that love, pe love people to be found. Okay, hallelujah. He said that everybody don't rejoice. He found the sheep. He put the sheep on his shoulder. He's walking back, and he tells everybody, come on, rejoice with me. I found my lost sheep. But now the sheep smell like the world. Because it left the shepherd. It got sadness spurs and cuckoo bugs and bugs on it. It, got, it don't look clean yet because the, sheep, the shepherd just brought it back home. And everybody won't rejoice over a dirty sheep because the sheep don't look like them. Amen. The sheep don't smell like them. The sheep don't have their status or their job or their money. The sheep don't live in their neighborhood. The sheep can't dress like them. It's just a dirty sheep that Jesus is bringing home. And sometimes we don't like dirty sheep because they don't look good in our churches. I'm about to go home now. But Jesus brought all of us in here dirty. Come on now. Every one of us came in here dirty. You ought to give God a shout praise. He cleaned us up. I need somebody to know how you look when he found you. Give God a real praise if you knew how you looked when he found you. You didn't look like you look right now. Amen. You didn't have what you have right now. You didn't have the joy you have right now. He found us dirty. Jesus come in here with a drug, somebody that was strung out on drugs. Uh-uh, not her. Jesus came with the public and the sinner. They didn't look like the church. They didn't look like we think. Amen. Don't get so high that you think too highly of yourself. Give God praise for where he brought you from. Give God praise for how he cleaned you up. 
Give God praise how he restored you. Give God praise how he gave, gave you provision. Give God praise for being in your right mind. Give God praise just for being who he is. I need somebody to give my God. Hallelujah. Did he do it for you? Did he bring you out? Did he bless you? Well, let the redeem of the Lord say amen. <laughs> if a drunk, a wine or a dope addict, a prostitute, if Jesus bring them in and they on the shoulder, we ought to look and say, oh, that used to be me. If he did it for them, if he did it for me, he can do it for them. Give my God a praise up in here. Hallelujah. Somebody declare, I'm blessed right now. In the name of Jesus. And you think I'm not going to praise him? You think I'm not going to lift him up? After all God done for... Okay, okay, okay. See, see, sometimes, sometimes we miss what I just said. Because when God cleans us up, he brings us in, and I don't care if you were working a Fortune 500 job, you were still dirty. I don't care if you had a suit and tie on, you were dirty. On the inside, you weren't clean. When, look, sometimes when God brings us in, and we get our little self together, And then we say, give and pray. We go like, oh, hallelujah. Because we don't got too cute. We don't got sophisticated now. So, I mean, we, we, we can't praise him like we. But every now and then, somebody is grateful. And they look back over their life. And they can't help but give God. They can't help but give God, they can't help but give God a real shout praise. Hallelujah. I look to the hills which come in my help, not some of my help, all of my help. So let me close. If God ever stop you from utterly falling, give him a shout praise today. Come on, give God a praise. Tell somebody, I wouldn't be here if God didn't catch me. God caught me, reestablished me. Hallelujah. I'm not what I used to be. But I give God praise for who I am today. Look at somebody saying, you don't even know it. But the shepherd got something good for you. The best is yet to come. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody that love the Lord, give him a shout, pray. Hallelujah. Come on, bless his name. Come on, help me praise his name. Hallelujah. Thank God for the shepherd. Come on, get ready to bless us. Come on. Thank God for the shepherd. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the shepherd have never found the clean sheep. Every sheep he found smelled like the world. Come on, y'all know how to praise him. If you can't pray for nobody but yourself, give him a shout praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, st won't you stand for one second and let the anointing of God hit you right now. Let it flow where you're at right now. Hallelujah.
Somebody say, I am grateful for the goodness of God in my life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in here. Hallelujah. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemy. You can look, but you can't touch a child of God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be the God. Glory be the God. Thank you. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the middle of 
God. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd. And then he says that the church, that the, that the church, did it leave me? Let me hold that. Test it by. That the church is his. Jesus called the church, listen, he says, once we get into his body, he said, you are my bride. He calls men, the men and the women, both the bride of Christ. What he's saying is that he will protect his bride. Somebody say, I'm a bride, I'm a bride. The keeper of the sheep, the master of all, keeps and protects his bride. Don't be a runaway bride. Stay close to the groom in the realm of the spirit. God, I thank you today for revealing to us just how much you love the lost and what you, what extent you will go to find them. Some of us in here have already received Jesus and you know about, my, you know the message that we preach today. I'm looking here. Y'all look up here. See how close? I'm not going to fall now. But look how close I am to the edge. Some of us were right here. And Jesus wrapped his arms around us. And pulled us back. I'm about to get the invitation now that you may come to him. Because some people are just like this right now. And God's saying, you're in danger. And I want to wrap my arms around you and bring you back to the foundation, the center. This is for you today. If you're not, if you have not asked God to save you, only you can do that. Nobody else can do it for you. You're the only one that can make him your shepherd. So the invitation right now is for you to quit being afraid of a crowd of people or anything. You need God to be your savior and shepherd. So we're going to give two invitations. You know the second one, if you're already saved and you Maybe just moved in this area. Maybe you're visiting us for the first time. You're looking for a church home. I really believe God has sent you to the right place. Come on down, sis. Come on. Come on down. Uh, for if anyone needs to ask God to save them today, I'm going to ask that you come to receive salvation. If anybody else come and say, well, I just want to join this ministry today, be under this covering. Wherever you may be standing, I want you to come today. This is a very important walk for you. It's not about me. It's not about the church. You need Jesus. This is an open opportunity that you're going to show everybody that you're coming to the Lord. You're not ashamed of him. You want to show everybody. this. I think something about you showing everybody is a big boost to watch your walk with God. You break some yokes when you come before people. You break some fears. You break some principalities.
There'll be any other today saying, this is my day. I'm going to give my life to Christ. Anyone else? This is my day. I'm going to join this ministry. Anyone else? Amen. Somebody else coming? Come on, bro. God bless you. We ought to be clapping louder than that. Yeah, Lord. God bless you, bro. Hallelujah. Love you, bro. There be any other, God. You hear the voice of God right now. Your day, your day, your day, your day. These, both of them going to receive a blessing from the Lord. Any others? Be bold in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me do something while they're doing that. If you're standing up and you say, I really want to come, but the devil have you procrastinating and he think he got you, you really want to come. I see some of y'all leaning. Keep on leaning. You'll get out of that aisle. Amen. Come on, here y'all come. Here you come. Come on, here you come. Here you come. Amen. Get it, God, and pray for the young people. Hallelujah. Let me make it clear what this time is about. Is your public confession that I'm accepting Jesus. That's what this is about. I want everybody to know. You're not worth coming for everybody, but you're not ashamed to come before everybody. I want everyone to know that I'm coming to give my life to Christ. That's what this is about right now. Or I'm coming to join this ministry. Amen. Because God give you on the shepherd. That's what I am. And I'm the one that covers you in prayer and what's anointing on my life should flow on your life. Give God a pray for y'all, them too. Come on. Bless the Lord. Come on, y'all. We have been getting so many young people coming. I think in the last couple of months, we don't had about 40, 50 young people coming to give their life to Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Remember, not just for salvation, maybe you just relocated. They say every frog prays his own pond. Well, I'm going to be like that frog. I think you don't found the right pond. Amen. That would be life changing. The message and the challenging of the Holy Spirit would transform your life. All right, to God be the praise and glory. Even while we, after I sit you down, you still can come. You may be seated. Let me say this today now. Part view, usually after I give the invitation, we do like the children of Israel. We do an exit, exile. Try to hang around today, this first Sunday. Come on, bring, bring them on, bring them on, bring them on. Give God a hand. Look at these young people coming. We're going to have our communion today. We'll have you ready to leave the parking lot in about 10 more minutes, 15 at the most. And, uh, after our, and that including communion, which is sacred before the Lord. And if you don't have a communion cup and you are a child of God and you need one, lift your hand so the, arch, the deacons can find you right now. You didn't get a communion cup. There you go, right here. Lift your hand up high or stand up. While we're doing this, they can make sure you have them in your hand. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, 
you. Amen. We have yeah. Brother Anthony Brown. Uh, he's coming for prayer and he wants to get closer to God. Amen. Brother Brown, God bless you today. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, this young man has purpose like never before. His prayer that he would not be a wandering sheep. Hallelujah. He want to stay close to you. Every thing that of this world that seem to be drawing him away from you. Filling his appetite with natural things. I come against it now that he will get hungry for the things of God. Bless this young man. Protect him. Let him find out who he is and fulfill the purpose for which he was born. I ask these prayers over his life in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Oh, Lord, it took me a minute. <laughs> bless oh, you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Pastor Ray, Sister Deliria Holmes coming to rededicate her life. Bless him. Oh, my goodness. Now, everybody in Haines City <laughs> know this daughter of God. And uh, I know you've been going through some things, but God keep on keeping you, no matter what. This is, this is your friend? This is, this is my friend. Okay. Navi. Okay. This is, this is my, my, my granddaughter's friend, Navi. Okay. And this is Dulcie. Amen. All right. Uh, rededicating, this is Sister Holmes. She, for those of you that don't know her, uh, she's, you've been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad God has brought you back to rededicate your life. Amen. Bless him. Father God, I pray over Sister Holmes right now. I pray that you just draw her so spiritually close to you. A sheep that refuse to wonder, yes. but coming home, rededicating, not just to the church, but to you, God. And we say thank you for her life. Thank you for her purpose. Now fill her with the joy that she needs. Make it personal, God, as she make it personal. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Okay. One, two, and all four. Okay. G give me the... Okay. You're coming. You already have given God your life. Amen. All right. I give you the right hand of fellowship. I well, that means simply when I shake your hand, you are a full member of this church now. You, you are a member of Parkview Christian Life Center. God bless you so much. Right now. Now, those that want to give their life to Christ, I want y'all to step forward a little. Everyone that come to give their life to Christ. Amen. You, oh, you came with your friend. All right. Come on. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all going to make this just as personal as the 23rd song. This is your sister. Okay. I love this. Look. You, you the big sister? She, she got her baby sister covered. This girl, she's like, I got you, I got you. It's nothing like this. 
and she ain't but a couple years older, but she got her. You better believe that. <laughs> Amen. Look how she's standing like mess with her. <laughs> Amen. Y'all ready? Repeat the words that I have you to repeat. Father God, I want y'all to talk real loud. I come now in the name of Jesus as a lost sheep. I confess my sins. I believe you died for my sins. Today, I'm found. I'm yours. I'm a child of the living God because I have confessed my sins before you, Lord Jesus. Thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless y'all so much. God got you. Sometime when you see someone give their life to Christ, you'll see a reaction like this. And sometime you won't. God is more than an outward, outward reaction. He does something on the inside that changes everything. So we thank God for all these that have received Christ. Next Sunday, we'll be doing baptism. And they're going to give you information about getting prepared to be baptized next Sunday in the name of Jesus. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring everyone to be a witness of the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. Father God, I also pray for Sister Home Health from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Let your healing anointing flow. I lift up her husband too, God. In Jesus' mighty name, show yourself strong and mighty. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all may go that direction and God got you guys and God bless you so much. Got sister, man. Get, get on the other side. Amen. All right, God bless you. You good? You good? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Give God praise for it. Amen. If you, and Deke will be back in a minute. Deke, let uh, one of our ushers take sister home from there. I need you back up here. Deacon Carl, you hear me? All right. Let's all stand. Or you can, well, it's easier to stand, I guess. Uh, stay, you can stay there, Deke. If you can't stand and it's easier for you to drink this communion sitting, you can remain seated, seated, sitting. This is really a sacred time in the Lord. What makes it so sacred is that before Jesus died, he always used things that were in a symbolic way to represent something natural in this, that represented something in the spirit realm. He took bread because he knew his disciple would take it and eat it and that bread would become a part of their body. And Jesus said, I want to be a part of your body. I want to be in your spirit and living in you. He says, so for right now, this bread represents my body. He said, often as you eat it, you do it in remembrance of me. The bread is in us now. And we're, in, we're part of it. Then he took the cup and he knew that until he shed the blood, our sin would not be forgiven. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And so he said, this is my blood. 
And often as you drink it, you're drinking in remembrance of me. And then he said, often as you eat this bread and you will drink this cup, you will be showing the Lord death until he return. Amen, somebody. Amen. Last thing we're going to do, and then we all can be released to go out and be grateful that God found us. Amen. Amen. If there anyone remains, you can go uh, be seated, please. If there anyone here for the first time, we want to be a blessing to you because you've been a blessing to us. If you're here for the first time, let me see your hand. First time with us. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Everyone that's been here for the first time, let me pray with you right quickly, and then we're going to let you go. Come down. Meet me right here. I just want to pray with you. and be. I'm so grateful that you chose to worship with us. Give them a hand as they're coming down. What a blessing to have you today. Blessing, woman of God. Blessing over here. First time being with us. What a blessing. Come on up. God bless. God bless you. Amen. What a blessing. God bless this young lady here. Oh, my goodness. What a blessing. All right. We're going to get names. I'm going to pray with them. And then we are going to give the benediction. All right. God bless you. Amen. Um, my name is Tracy Hubbard, and um, I'm from Chicago, and I just moved here a year ago. Amen. God bless you, Tracy. Glad that you came to worship with us today. Amen. Just let them hold it. God bless you. Um, my name is Cassia. I came from California two months ago, so I recently moved here to Orlando. And just following God, being obedient, um, so I'm glad to have been here today. I'm glad you're here too. Amen. Amen. All, right. All right. Good afternoon. I'm Antoinette Kelly, and I'm from Chicago also. I moved here in 2018. Glad to have you. Amen. Hello. I'm uh, Ryan McKeithen. I'm from Tampa, Florida. I came down with Super Park. Amen. Glad to have you today. Amen. Hello. My name is Kaya. Uh, I'm just on my church journey, just seeing where my feet can be, you know. Amen. And um, it's starting to look like this one is. But, you know, you know, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Amen. This one it had me over there. Had to shout and give it God praise. Yeah, <laughs> to hear my voice, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, born and raised here, and it was great to be here today. Glad to have you with us. God bless you so much. Good afternoon. I'm Austin Ellis. I'm from born and raised in Hollywood, Florida, now living in Emporia, Virginia. But I'm here with longtime friends, Deacon and Sister Alexander. Amen. Glad you're here today. Thank you. All right. Huh? What about? Oh, two motor came since? I, I, okay, God bless you. Let, just, oh, you came with, that's your friend, yeah. You remember, right? All right, yeah. I'm Brianna, and I'm from Florida. Amen. Glad to have all of you. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that um, how I landed in this it. church I, today, I, I was at the man. doctor office, and I met a beautiful young lady that invited me. And I can't remember her name. And she wrote her number down, and I couldn't find her number to let her know I was coming today. So I just wanted to say oh, thank you for the invite. Okay. Whoever right. you are. <laughs> Wherever you are, they're fine. They're going to spot you next week. She, you, she good. She good. We used to babies around here. She's good. We're cute self. Amen. She's good. Praise the Lord. All right. Come on, come on. Feel free. What? She wants to give her life to Christ. All right. That's great. What's your name? Erlen. Erlen. Today you want to give your life to Christ. That's oh, amen. 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 All right. What's your last name? Holmes. Holmes. Repeat after me. Father God. Father God. Today. Today. I receive you. I receive you as my savior. As my savior. Thank you for service today. Thank you for service today. I don't want to be a wandering sheep. I don't want to be a wandering sheep. I accept. I accept 
your death, your death burial, burial, and resurrection. And resurrection. Right, now, right now, through my confession, through my confession I, am I am a child of God. A child of God. Amen. Amen. Right now. Stay right here. Amen. Now, you can take a back there. All right. To God be all the praise. I'm going to pray over everyone. And um, feel free to bring these babies. We got a place. I think, I don't know what age. What age they saw back there? Two? How old is she? She'll be two next month. She'll be two next month? She'll work. We'll work on it. Got a beautiful place back in the back that if you want to. Oh, they say three? Three. They say three back there. Okay. We're going to work it out. <laughs> Mom said, believe me, she tried. <laughs> Father God, in Jesus' name, bless everyone I'm touching now. Let your fl anointing flow and stay with them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <laughs> she going to listen. Don't worry. Father God, in Jesus, continue to bless, continue to anoint and guide. Even Jesus, thank you for your friend coming up here with you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, to God be all the praise and glory. Let's give God a hand. Listen, while y'all are here, I know some of you are going to be going back, but the ladies over there in red and black, listen, if you have any personal prayer requests, I'm going to pick them up today. They'll put them in my bag. I'll be reading them tonight. And I'll be touching the grin before I go to sleep tonight about what you wrote down. So follow her, those double doors, and they're going to uh, certainly take great care of you guys. Amen? All right, God bless you so much. All right, let us all stand. Again, let me say this, that we have two more services this week. We have an awesome Bible study. Oh, my goodness. That's tomorrow night at 7.30, right in here. And then we have an awesome Wednesday night service. Uh, it's growing. I was pleasantly surprised how many people showed up this Wednesday, and I'm looking for more and more every Wednesday. We're only out here about a little hour, but we worship God with everything we got for that hour, amen? That midweek boost, amen, of worship and praising God. All right, the word has been spoken. Amen.